Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes, into your space, into your world. And I am discussing T.I., the rapper T.I., and him having his daughter have her virginity tested once every year. His daughter, Deja Harris, is 18 years old, and she has to report under his tutelage or under his supervision um, takes her down to a doctor or gynecologist or whatever and she's tested with two fingers to see if she is a virgin to see if her hymen has been broken and I was trying to put myself in her place and I thought to myself you know 18 years old admittedly I was married at 18 but 18 years old and I'm a virgin would I really want to have anybody touching me down there, male or female? It's bad enough when you're not a virgin and you go to the um, that clinic to have a smear every year or how often you ever have to do it. I can't remember now. It's too long ago. But you have a smear and they open you open your legs and they put that bloody chrome thing inside you. It's bad enough that, let alone you have never been touched by a male to have somebody I don't know if they're male or female put their two fingers around that part of your body to see whether or not you are a virgin some people are saying oh well he's being overprotected he needs to monitor his daughter's behavior there's too much things going on around the world so therefore he's showing an avid interest I think he's being overprotective either you trust your daughter or you don't but there is no way that he should be taking his daughter to the clinic. I can understand his concerns, but supposing he takes her down there one day and she's not a virgin, what does he intend to do? What would he do with that information? Is he going to discard her? Is he going to beat her? Is he going to, what's he going to do? So you have to think about what are the repercussions? Is he going to disown her? Is he going to not leave her a legacy, any money? What would he plan to do if he found out through one of these visits she wasn't a virgin? Now, what the New York lawmakers are doing, they're going to make it against the law. Anybody that is found performing a, virgin, a virginity test, what they call a purity test, or overseeing it or supervising it will be um, they can be sued um, they lose all their professional qualifications and they can get um, a criminal record that is how far it's gone how big it's got now there is a disadvantage to being a virgin you know, a lot of times people, you know, especially men and fathers, they applaud virgins and say, oh, you know, I'd love to have a virgin or it's a sign of purity, it's a sign of goodness. But in Ghana, they have something called a Trikosi ritual where the sins of the fathers or the ancestors, if you know, if anybody in the family has committed a crime, they take the virgin children as young as eight years old, sometimes six years old, and they send them off to be um, slaves to the gods. They call them gods, but it's actually a pastor, the equivalent of a pastor who stands in for the gods and turns them into slaves, has, has, has sex with them at night, makes them work for no money during the day. And that's because they're virgins. If they weren't virgins, they wouldn't be called in and also when you're thinking about um, fathers or families who um, try to protect the virginity of their daughters you have to wonder whether or not it is that extreme that's brought about female genital mutilation where they actually sew they either cut off the clitoris or they sew up that part of the woman's body her private parts. It's banned in the UK, but 
there's still doctors that they bring over from different parts of the world that perform it. If it's found out, then they can be prosecuted. But I mean, these are the kind of things they do to women. You know, forever being humili humiliated. You're humiliated if you're not a virgin. You're humiliated if you are. That is humiliation. I don't think he quite understands what he is exposing his daughter to. And if anything, that would probably make her think, oh, yeah, well, I might as well. It feels a bit good. I might as well go and have it off with someone. And stop all of this every year, every going down and every year. To me, that is more likely to turn her the other way. Unless the reward is so great, she, it's worth being a virgin for. But how does he know that she wouldn't be a virgin anyway without the test? Why can't he just trust her? Anyway, it's a big outrage and I just had to say something about it because I just, I just don't like the idea of, you know, that kind of thing going on and there's World Health, World Health Organization has got involved and I just wanted to um, say a little bit about um, what the virginity testing is like. Um, number one, a practitioner who performs or oversees the examination will be charged for professional misconduct. They will get penalties and possible criminal charges. Now this is a new law that's coming out you know, as a result of the T.I. rapper claiming that he takes his, I mean, he was actually applauding himself as a good father. And he said he takes his daughter down to have her, to check to see if her hymen is intact once a year. And it hit the roof, you know, it went viral. So now, even though they said they misinterpreted what he said, they reckon that there are people in the U.S. of A. who do that. So therefore, there's going to be a law against it. Anyway, it's perceived as a violation and harm against women. Two fingers are inserted to ascertain whether the woman is a virgin. And like I said, if a woman has never slept with a man, touching her private part is a, viola is a violation and could be psychologically damaging. The invasive procedure of a virginity examination violates the sanctity and purity of a female, Miss Persaud said at said of the exams commonly known as purity tests or virginity tests when a child or adult whether a child or adult this breach is not only moral grounds but also the privacy entitled to a female and their doctor the hymen a thin membrane that partly covers the entrance to the vagina can be torn or stretched during sexual intercourse physical activity tampon use or medical procedures so i mean i doubt very much if these people who want to keep their children as virgins they're going to allow them to use a tampon i think that's a western thing but you know because that could be they could use that as an excuse and said my tampon did it so i doubt if they'll allow that hymen examinations are sometimes used in some countries as a requirement for marriage and not every girl is born with a hymen and the ab presence or absence of a hymen does not indicate virginity according to the american college of Ob obstetricians and gynecologists well you, can you imagine that not every woman is born with a hymen so what then yeah look for your virgin and she ain't got a hymen and you're going to think she's been messing around Let's see Judge not, let, let ye be judged. There's, there are parents in third world countries who subject their children to female genital mutilation, known as FGM. And there are even doctors who perform it in the Western countries, but FGM is outlawed. America is now looking to outlaw virgin testing with similar consequences. Parents who are obsessed with having their daughters checked to see if their hymen has been broken um, i.e. loss of virginity, could have a similar mentality to those who permit female genita genital mutilation. Mutilation is relative, and it is. I mean, you don't have to be cut to be mutilated. You can be psychologically mutilated. You can be emotionally mutilated. Um, the rapper T.I. sparked nationwide controversy last month when he said he 
takes his 18-year-old daughter to the doctor every year to check if she is a virgin. While he later said his comments had been misinterpreted, experts say virginity testing is a real thing that happens in the US. Now one state is taking steps to ban it. Should virginity testing be a crime? Is T.I. overly protective by being concerned about his daughter's virginity? I, under I understand that he's, you know, checking her phones and all sorts. Totally obsessed. And I would have thought, you know, there, there doesn't seem to be any trust in place. Um, and then i just tell you a little bit about female genital mutilation. Female genital mutilation, FGM, involves procedures that include the partial or total removal of the external female genital organs for non-medical reasons. So what they do is they remove the clitoris so that that young lady cannot have any, receive any pleasure. So what happens once she gets married then? She's never to have pleasure again because it doesn't grow back. So they deprive that woman of pleasure, period. The practice is extremely painful and has serious health consequences, both at the time when the mutilation is carried out and later in life. The age at which girls undergo FGM varies enormously according to the community. The procedure may be carried out when the, new, when the girl is newborn during childhood or adolescence, just before marriage or during the first pregnancy. However, the majority of cases of FGM are thought to take place between the ages of five and eight. Oh, those poor little mites. It's absolutely awful. And like I said, they have Tricosi, where girls' lives are in jeopardy. And there was this woman, um, I think I've got it here. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I do. Um, hold on one sec. I should have had it up about, you know, these these um, girls who, if I don't, I'll just have to leave. And it's not on this phone. I know where it is. I think, if you just bear with me a minute, I think it is important that you do see, because sometimes I think, you know, I wonder if they think I'm making it up. Half the time I just wonder if they think I'm making it up. So let's see what we have here. Tchaikovsky, no, that's HTTP, that's not YouTube. I know that if I wait for the other one, I don't know how long you've got. What could I be talking about while I'm looking for this? <laughs> but yeah, I think it is important to be aware that, you know, um, the abuse that women suffer. And um, this lady, she went to Africa and she actually interviewed the pastors, well, what they call themselves. They're representatives of the gods, basically. And in this Tricosi culture, um, it's a bit, you know, like in the Bible, well, some of you probably don't read the Bible, but you know, they say the sins of the fathers fall down on the children. Well, they, they take it actually literally, these people. And so the sit like one woman, um, she stole a ring. And because she stole a ring, her eight year old granddaughter had to be, had to um, become a sex slave or a slave to, um, these big old hardback men, you know. When I say hardback men, they're like 40s and 50s and having sex with little eight-year-olds and then they don't see anything wrong with it. It's absolutely awful. Um, okay, I'm nearly there. I'm nearly there. Ah, got it. It's called Trakosi, and it means wife or slave of the gods. It's an ancient West African tradition that to this day enslaves thousands of women and young girls, some as young as seven years old.
They're condemned to a life of slave labor and sexual servitude, not because they did anything wrong, but because someone in their family committed a crime, sometimes generations ago. And to pay for the crime, their families must send young virgins to be the slaves of tribal priests, often for the rest of their lives. This is I want to move this on a little bit because right? it is a bit long. The families don't want them back. When I ran away from the priest, life was so hard. People ran away from me. Even my relatives turned their backs. <laughs> Mercy Senyale is still an outcast after running away from a priest who kept her enslaved for 15 years. And all because her great-grandmother stole a pair of gold earrings. She has three children now. The priest first forced himself on her when she was 11 years old. The first night, he wanted to sleep with me, and I refused, so he beat me so hard my cries woke up all the other slave girls. And I finally gave in. Can you tell us about the priest? The priest is not very big, but he's very wicked. This is the priest Mercy served, Togbe Akidopo. By day, he's a government official with the Ministry of Health. By night, he's a husband to ten slaves who've borne him 60 children. That is my son. We've talked to one girl at least who's spoken to us about your shrine, and she said that you beat her, that you forced her to work with no money, that she hardly had anything to eat, and that you forced her to sleep with you when she was 11 years old. And you believe it? Do you believe it? I'm asking you. That's what I'm also asking. Do you believe that story is never correct? All the girls, all the wives you take, do they all accept your advances? Do they all want to sleep with you? Or do they have to? Having sex with a woman depends on love and affection. If the woman is not willing, you can't force it. Is the priest lying then when he tells us that everybody was happy and everybody was treated well? <laughs> He's telling lies. He's telling a big lie. So many of us couldn't stand the suffering. We had to run away. Anyone who ran away was brought back by their parents and repeatedly raped again in this very building. Later, some of the girls were helped by Reverend Walter Pingpong. The sad part of it is that your parents brought you or your family brought you so if you ran to them they bring you back you know you you just can't escape international needs does not want yeah so i just wanted to run that by you because like i said you know sometimes virginity having a bit being a virgin come has a price to pay as well and it can work to your disadvantage so yeah i just thought i would share that with you any comments would be appreciated. And you know what I was thinking, you know, that woman who's interviewing them, I mean, by telling the, the priest that um, he jumped on one of them and she didn't want it at the age of 11, he's bound to identify that girl. And who knows if her life isn't in danger. You know, sometimes these people, they go out there to so-called help. And, you know, unless they can take them away with them and, and keep them safe, why are they interfering? Because sometimes the, the penalty can be so much harsher when they find out that, you know, these young girls are, well, they're not even so young now. Some of them have been there for years. But at the beginning, I missed that. You, well, I, I skipped it, I guess. There was a girl of eight years old. She had been, um, let me just show it to you. Because it is important. And it is, I'll just show you that bit, actually. Yeah. Do you like it here? Do you miss your parents? Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to show you. This part of Africa. Yeah. That young girl. Is, uh, has been um, given to one of those big old hardback priests to be to work during the day and have sex with them at night. Absolutely preposterous.
Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you so you know what's going on around the world. And like I said, it's all come up just because of TI talking about the virginity tests. And then I just decided to take it a little step further um, and to explore other things relating to the same thing. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.